Well, there's a story that takes place in the Welsh Highlands many years ago. Uh, two traveling ministers were going through the villages in those highlands and they met a young shepherd boy who was hearing impaired and he didn't know how to read or write. The two missionaries explained to the young boy that just like he was a shepherd to his sheep, Jesus wanted to be his personal shepherd, take care of him all of the days of his life. They taught the young boy to remember the phrase, the Lord is my shepherd using the five fingers on his right hand and to pause every time he got to the word, my, the Lord is my shepherd. Years passed by and the missionaries came back through that village and they inquired about the young shepherd boy. Well, the previous winter had been extremely harsh with severe snowstorms and the villagers explained to the missionaries that the young boy had died buried in the snowfall the year before. But the villagers said, there was one thing that we couldn't explain when we found his body buried beneath the snow. He was holding on to the fourth finger on his right hand. The Lord is my shepherd. Today, we continue our Jesus Is series that we kicked off on Easter Sunday at the Listening Room Cafe. Listen, it was an incredible time celebrating the resurrection. We had worship that was just incredible, and we even had a spontaneous baptism. I'm already looking forward to our next first Sunday in May. And we're going to continue our series, Jesus Is Today. The message is called Jesus Is Shepherd. Now, when you read the Bible, we've got to keep in mind that the entire Bible is about Jesus. Uh, The New Testament was written in light of the revelation of Jesus, and the Old Testament is pointing toward Jesus. It's showing us our need for a Savior. With the Old Covenant, we see our need for a New Covenant. And all of the Old Testament gives us foreshadowings of what Jesus would come to fulfill in the fullness of His grace and His truth. And so in the Old Testament, we've got uh, characters and stories that are glimpses of what Jesus would be. And many of these characters in the Old Testament are shepherds. I mean, go all the way back to Genesis and you got Abel, Adam's son. He was a shepherd. Jacob, uh, Rachel, Jacob's wife, was a shepherdess. Joseph, even Moses. Listen, before he led the Israelites out of Egypt, he spent 40 years in the wilderness shepherding. And of course, you can't mention shepherds in the Old Testament without the greatest shepherd of all, shepherd turned king and songwriter, David. In fact, it was David who wrote the words, the Lord is my shepherd. It was in Psalm 23, which is quite possibly the most well-known chapter in the entire Bible. You've probably heard Psalm 23 quoted in funerals, and many people use it as a psalm for dying. But as Aaron Holt wrote in his book, 23, it's actually a song for living. And I'm so excited as we continue this series and talk about today how Jesus is shepherd. We're going to dive a little bit deeper in this in our house churches. We're going to do a special application where we're going to read through this chapter with Lectio Divina. And I'm excited about that. Listen, if you're not involved in a house church, you can jump in at any time. It's not too late. Go to the link you see here on the screen. Jump into a house church this week. It's the best way to find community. And so I just want to read Psalm 23 this morning. This is from the NIV version. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before my enemies in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus is shepherd. Now, in the Gospel of John, we see these seven I am statements that Jesus uses to describe himself. And one of those I am statements is, I am the good shepherd. In John chapter 10, it says this, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life 
only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I have received from my father. He's the good shepherd. In fact, he's not just the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd, according to uh, Hebrews 13, 20. And I'll take it even a step further. He's not just the great shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. Listen to what it says in 1 Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Now, Peter is writing this particular verse to the elders of the church and for all church leadership that would come throughout the ages. And he's saying, listen, we are all under shepherds. Jesus is the chief shepherd. Listen, my title here at Bridges Nashville might be lead pastor, but I'm really just an under shepherd. Jesus is the pastor of this church. And together with the staff here at Bridges Nashville, we're following his lead. We're tuning in to the guiding voice of the Holy Spirit and leading this church the best way that we can. But it's Jesus who leads this church and it's Jesus who guides us. I've been a pastor now for over 10 years, going back to my days in Washington, D.C., where I was a pastor on staff with National Community Church, our parent church here at Bridges. And when I was trying to figure out, okay, what is the role of a pastor, I had to keep going back to Jesus. In fact, Jesus is the greatest example of a pastor that we see in the entire Bible. Did you know that the word poimen is the Greek word for pastor? And it translates into shepherd. Jesus is the good, great, and chief shepherd. Years ago in a sermon, Charles Spurgeon said this, Jesus is good in his dying, great in his rising, and chief in his coming. Come on, how good is that? Let me say it again. He's the good shepherd when he laid down his life for the sheep. He's the great shepherd when he rose again from the dead as we celebrated that last Sunday. He's the chief shepherd in that he's coming back again for his people in the fullness of his glory. Okay, so Jesus refers to himself as the shepherd, the good shepherd. I think that makes us sheep. Why sheep? Well, in his book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23, author Philip Keller writes this. The lot in life of any particular sheep depended on the type of man who owned it. Some shepherds were gentle, kind, intelligent, brave, and selfless in their devotion to their flock. Other sheep, under their shepherd, would struggle, starve, and suffer endless hardship due to the kind of shepherd that they had. From early dawn to late at night, a good shepherd is one who is alert to the welfare of his flock. A diligent shepherd rises early and goes out first thing in the morning without fail to look over his flock. With a searching eye, he examines his sheep to make sure that they're fit and content and able to be on their own feet. In an instant, he can tell if there's a problem, whether they're ill and require special attention. And throughout the day, he casts his ever-loving shadow over the flock to make sure all is well. He sleeps with one eye and two ears open, ready at the least sign of trouble to jump up and protect his own. Now, sheep are not the most intelligent creature in the animal kingdom. Uh, They rely fully on their shepherd. Uh, Recently, I had to file for our taxes, and you have to claim your dependents when you do that. And my dependents are a six- and an eight-year-old, Moses and Nora. We have to fully take care of them. Sarah and I, we we feed them, we dress them. Uh, Well, we don't have to dress them so much these days, but uh, we teach them, we clean them, we brush their teeth. I don't know if you have any kids. Maybe you have a pet because pet ownership is a lot like that. Uh, We don't have any sheep, but we do have a three-legged German short hair pointer. Her name is Lila. I wouldn't say she's the brightest tool in the shed. I'm pretty sure she would play fetch 24-7 if you had a ball in your hand. That's the only thing that's ever on her mind. Ball, play, ball, play. Well, that and food. Uh, But listen, she is completely dependent on us as her owners, specifically for three things. And these are the three things I want to lean into this morning when it pertains to having a shepherd. If you're taking notes, write these three things down. The shepherd provides, the shepherd protects, and the shepherd leads the way. The first thing I want you to know is Jesus is provider. Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Everything that you need in this life, God can and will provide. 
Jesus laid down his own very life. And so that should tell you that there's nothing he will withhold from his sheep. Uh, shepherds provide their sheep with food and water and care. When they're sick, they provide medicine and healing. When they're anxious, they provide them with a safe space and with peace. Our dog, uh, Lila, is terrified of storms. You may remember the crazy storms that we had here in Nashville with some flooding just a couple of weeks ago. And we could just hear these loud thunderclaps and our dog was going crazy. So anytime a storm is coming, we put an anxiety jacket on her to try, to try to calm her a little bit. And then we've got these chews that we got from the pet store. Listen, the, the jacket doesn't work. The chews don't work. The only thing that's going to calm Lila down is if we let her come into the bed and we pet her and we just make sure that she knows everything's going to be okay. And that's what a shepherd does, right? They take care of their sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. It's interesting to think of David writing this passage. Sometimes we read these things and we read it through the lens that we think David was a shepherd boy out in the pastures tending his flock when he wrote these words. Maybe. But many scholars actually believe that David wrote these words years later in his life during a time where his country was in civil war. In fact, his own son Absalom was trying to take his kingdom from him. It was quite possibly the lowest moment in David's life. And yet he writes these words, I lack nothing. I don't know what you need today. Maybe it's a job or provision or you need a, a breakthrough in your health. It could be peace, hope, or joy. Whatever it is that you need, the good shepherd provides. Everyone has a shepherd. Who is your shepherd? You know, some people would say that their career or their wealth or their possession or their relationships have their focus. So that might be their shepherd. But when the Lord is your shepherd, you lack nothing because all of that other stuff can be taken in an instant. The shepherd provides. The next thing I want you to know today is that the shepherd protects. Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Oh, it's so amazing to know that he is with us. Even in the valley, he's with you. You know, every uh, day, just about every day, I take our dog Lila out on a walk throughout the neighborhood. And as we're walking through the neighborhood, we're going to meet other people, some couples and some uh, young people that are going to be walking their dogs. And all of the other dogs want to come up to us and say, hey, but not Lila. She is afraid of other dogs. In fact, she'll get behind me and poke out her head in between my legs and look around, always worried, but she gets behind me because she knows her shepherd is going to protect her. I won't let anything bad happen to her. And that's why I've got her on a leash to keep her from running off because dogs will run off all the time. Now, they didn't have leashes back in David's day and age, but shepherds had a rod and a staff. And this is what we read in Psalm 23. Now, a rod was a small billy club-like tool used to throw at predators to ward them off or even to throw at the sheep in case they were trying to eat a poisonous plant or run off away to danger. A rod was used to count the sheep as they passed under it. And a shepherd would use a rod to divide the sheep's wool to search their skin for disease. The rod is kind of like the word of God in our lives. The word protects us, the word disciplines us, and the word searches us. Now, a shepherd's staff was a slender-like stick with a hook at the top, kind of looked like a candy cane, if you will. And it was used for gently lifting up baby lambs into their nursing mother's bosom. It could also be used to bring a lamb in close to the shepherd gently. Now, Jesus protects us. He's our ever-present help in our time of need. Shepherds would also use their staffs to guide their sheep. And that brings me to my next point. A shepherd leads the way. Back to Psalm 23. Verse 2 says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Let me go back to my dog one more time. And this is important, okay? If I just let Lila run loose, who knows where she would end up? I mean, literally, she would trust anybody as long as they had a ball in their hand. Or she could catch a scent of a barbecue happening and she would take off and run into a street and possibly get hit by a car. Now, we don't know how she lost her leg, but the shelter told us that it was most likely in a car accident. At the end of the day, pets just need a guide, someone to lead the way. 
And for those who call themselves Christ followers, we're literally saying that we're following the lead of Jesus Christ. He leads us. He guides us. And let me tell you, Jesus always leads to peace. Psalm 23 paints this picture of quiet waters and green pastures. That is the image of peace. Jesus is rest for the weary soul. He is hope for the hopeless, joy for the joyless. In fact, in Matthew 11, he says, Come to me if you're weary and find rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He leads us to peace and he guides us with the Holy Spirit. John 16, 13. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. 50 days after Easter, we have Pentecost. And and this is when the Holy Spirit was unleashed on all peoples. The Holy Spirit is a game changer. And the Holy Spirit is available to every believer. And trust me, we need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Because if we have the Holy Spirit in us, we can know the will of the Father. We can follow the lead of Jesus Christ. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you fresh today. The shepherd leads the way. Remember John 10, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Do you know his voice? You can't follow a voice that you don't know. It's interesting that my dog knows my voice. Okay. And it's interesting that I can say Lila's name different ways in different tones and she'll know exactly what I mean. If I'm excited and I want to take her on a walk and say, Lila, come here. Her ears perk up. She gets all excited. Her tail starts wagging. If she's done something naughty, I say, Lila, her ears go down, her tail tucks down. And if I'm looking for her, I say, Lila, Lila, she knows my voice. Is Jesus calling out to you today? Is he looking for you? And do you know his voice? Let me close with a parable. Now, parables were stories that Jesus told to get a point across, and he really wanted people to understand his love for them as the good shepherd. Here's what it says in Matthew 18. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others on the hills and go out to search for the one that is lost? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he will rejoice over it more than over the 99 that didn't wander away. In the same way, it is not my heavenly father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. You see, lambs weren't very valuable in in this culture. As Jesus was teaching, people would have thought, this is interesting because lambs didn't catch a very high price in the market. They weren't thought of as animals that were powerful, majestic, or smart. No, a lamb is very humble. It is a meek animal. And yet, in this story, the shepherd leaves the 99 to go after the lost one. As shepherd, we see that Jesus is filled with love and compassion, especially for those who are lost. It's why he came. If you feel lost, poor, or vulnerable today, much like a lamb, you can rest assured that Jesus Christ is our guide. He's our provider and our protector. Do you know his voice? If you do, keep tuning into it. Spend every moment you can in his presence. Every day, carve out time to get to know his voice even more and even more. And if you don't know his voice today, I want you to know that you can know his voice. Reach out to us. We would love to pray with you. There's a number here on the screen. There's an email. If you need to know his voice today, Let us know so we can pray for you. Every time a lost lamb comes back into the pen, the Bible tells us there is a party in heaven. There is rejoicing around the throne because one of God's lost is now found. How amazing is that? Let's know his voice. Let me close with a benediction from Hebrews 13. 20. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's worship today.